wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful Jesus love is very wonderful oh wonderful love so high you can't get over it so low you can't get under it so wide you can't get round it oh wonderful love good afternoon everybody and welcome to Messy Church from Hyde. Today, uh, I have with me three friends who are now going to introduce themselves. Hello, I'm, I'm Sheila, and you've probably seen me at Messy Church online and, and Real Messy Church. I do crafts. Hello, and I'm Sue, and again, you've probably seen me at Messy Church. And I do crafts as well. Hello, I'm Heather. Today, we're going to be thinking about Mothering Sunday, which is this Sunday. It used to be called Mothering Sunday because it was the one Sunday in the year that servants could go home and see their own mums, just once a year. Now it's quite often called Mother's Day, but whatever it's called, it means the same. and We'll be celebrating that on Sunday. And so today we thought it would be good to think about two mums in the Bible, in the Old Testament. The first one was called Jochebed. It's a very strange name to our ears, but she was an Israelite and she lived in Egypt where the Israelites were slaves of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians were very, very cruel. And they decided that there were too many Israelites. So the Pharaoh made a rule and he said that any new baby boy had to be killed as soon as it was born. Now Jochebed was pregnant, she was expecting a baby and she was very frightened. And she and her husband, when the baby arrived, they hid the babies for as long as they could. But you know what babies are like? They cry, they make a noise. So Jochebed, started to make a special basket with reeds and she made a basket very carefully with her daughter Miriam and then she painted the outside of the basket with pitch which was a special um, sort of paint that you could put on the outside of a basket which made it waterproof and when she'd finished doing that do you know what she did? she put the baby Moses in the basket. Now here's a picture. The baby Moses was in the basket and she hid him in the rushes. You can see them there. And she didn't just leave him. She asked Miriam, her daughter, to just watch and see what happened. Well, what happened was the princess, the Egyptian princess, came down to swim in the Nile. There she is swimming in the Nile. And she heard something crying. That baby, he couldn't keep quiet. And she sent her servant to see what it was. And there's the servant taking the lid off the basket and finding baby Moses. And she took the baby to show it to the princess. And the princess thought, he was such a beautiful baby. She wanted to take him home with her and look after him forever as her son. Well, of course, she needed somebody to nurse him. So Miriam said, here's Miriam, look there. She said, would you like a nurse for this baby? And the princess said, yes, I would. So Miriam went and she fetched her mum. Jochebed. And Jochebed, there she is, came and said, would you like me to nurse this baby? And the princess said, yes, please. And so very sweetly, she agreed and she went with the princess and she was able to be nursemaid to her own baby Joseph, Moses until he was about four or five. And then after that, he was brought up in the prince, princess's palace 
as an Egyptian. Now we're going to hear from Sue about a special house that you can make for your home. Here's Sue. Right, Sue. Hello there. Hello there. Now today we're going to make a very special type of house. We're going to make a bug house. What you're going to need is a drink bottle. Now these are plastic, so I'm sure you've got something like this at home. So you need a bottle and you need some string and you're going to need some twigs. So you can perhaps find some of those in the garden when you're out on a walk. And what you have to do, and you might need up to help you do this, you've got to cut the bottom of the bottle like this and you've got to cut the top off like this. When you've cut them off you might be able to use the bottom piece to put some seeds in for the birds in the garden. I think that would be quite useful and perhaps the top piece you could throw away in the recycling. So you're left then with a cylinder like this and it's open at both ends and we're going to fill the cylinder with some twigs but before we do that we need to put our string through the tube like this and tie it in a knot because what we're going to do at the end is we're going to hang it from a branch on a tree. So I'm tying the knot now. We've safely got like a bit of a swing, isn't it? You see, and that could be hung on the branch of the tree. And when we've done that, we've then got to fill the cylinder with all these twigs. And I've got lots of them to fill because we need to fill the whole thing. Here we go. See how many I can get in, I wonder. Because we need to fill it all the way up so that the bugs have plenty of places to sleep. I'm going to keep putting them in until it's all totally full. So you do need quite a lot of twigs to do this. Here they go. You might want to put a little bit of moss in as well because that would be quite a comfy warm home for some of these bugs. What sort of bugs are going to live in this home? Perhaps if you hang it in the tree when you've finished, and then a few days later, you can go out and see who's come occupied your hotel. Here it is, ready to go up in the tree. I wonder what books there will be. I'll have to see how many I can find in my hotel. I hope you enjoy making it. It's something a bit different. You'll be able to watch it and see who comes to live there. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. That was lovely. Uh, and you can have hang them on your tree and then go out every week and see what's made a, a nest in your bug hotel. Well, our first mother was called Jochebed and the second mum was called Hannah. Now, Hannah was really sad because she didn't have any children and everybody around her did. And she was so sad. And one day she went to the temple and she was crying because she had no children. She was crying to God. And the priest came to her, priest called Eli, and he said, what's the matter? And she said, I'm crying. I'm telling God that I so much want a child. And if I have a child, I'll give him to the service of God. And Eli said, Go and go home in peace, for God has heard your prayer. And Hannah stopped crying and she went home. And do you know, nine months later, she had a baby boy. And the baby boy was called Samuel. And she loved him so much. And she fed him. And she finally when she'd finished feeding him, when she weaned him, 
she knew that she had to give him to God. So she took him back to Eli in the temple and said, I promised that this boy would serve God. So he went to live with Eli in the temple, a bit like going to boarding school. So she still, he still had his mum at home, but he lived in the temple with Eli. And later on, he became one of the most important prophets and judges of Israel. And he was the prophet who anointed King David, about whom you know. So that was really important. Now, both of those uh, mums we've talked about had their babies and they loved their babies. And both of them, you know, the boys were actually brought up by somebody else. In the case of Moses, he was brought up in the palace at, uh, in Egypt by the princess. And in the case of Samuel, he was brought up by Eli. And so we're going to make cards in just a minute, mothering Sunday cards, and we can give them to our mums or to whoever is caring for us at the moment. It could be a grandma, grandpa, it could be a dad or somebody else altogether. And whoever that carer is, make that card for them. And here is Sue, uh, Sheila, who's going to show us how to make the card. So over to you, Sheila. Today, we're going to make a card. And um, for that, you'll, you'll need s some card, um, probably um, an A4 piece, um, if, you, if you've got it, or, or scraps, um, a sheet of paper, about A4 size, um, some colouring pens or crayons to, for decorations, some scissors, a glue stick, and if you have any stickers, that, that helps the decoration. And we're going to make a card shaped like a heart that looks like this. Now this one, um, I have um, written to mum, but of course, if somebody else is, is looking after you, you might want to put to dad or to grandma, granny or whatever. And this one I've put love from Josie, who's one of my granddaughters. Um, but the interesting thing about this card is that if you open it up, it, on this side it says, I love you, mum. And then the concertina bit, when it opens up, says, can you see, it says, this much. It may be back to front, I'm not quite sure about that, but, um, and um, I've done a little drawing there. And you, could, you can see, uh, I put some stickers on, but you could do exactly what you like. If you haven't got stickers, you can cover it with patterns or drawings. So first of all, you need to cut out two identical heart shapes, and there's going to be, um, I hope, um, a, a template on the website that looks like that. And you need to cut those out. Um, I've cut, cut one out and I'll just um, fin finish, finish cutting this one out. So we've got two. Now you, you can, can use white card, but if you've got colored card, um, you can use colored card. I've got, got some pink one there. Um, alternatively, if, if you can't get the um, template, you can actually draw your own. Um, now hearts aren't that easy to draw, um, but if you, um, if you take a piece of paper about 14 centimeters square like that and fold it in half. This is a, a top tip for getting, getting your um, um, heart symmetrical. So what you need to draw is half a heart. So 
I'll show you some, some, something like that. And if you cut that out, and I'll, I won't do it very neatly, but I'll do it quite quickly. And open it up. You've got a heart and you could use that to draw around on your, your um, proper bit of card. Then for the concertina bit, you need a strip of paper that's um, 30 centimetres long, and that's an A4 sheet, so you don't need to measure that really, and about three and a half centimetres wide. And then you start fold folding it like a concertina. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because it, to do it neatly, it takes quite a bit of patience and that you just go back backwards and forwards. I'm sure you've done that before. And here's one I, I did previously. And then you write on it this much. And I've put a few heart shaped, -shaped stickers there. So then you take your blank card, heart card, and write on it find it, um, to mum or granny or whoever, and you can put love from and your name. So that's going to be the outside. And then inside, you, you put, I love whoever it is. And then you could decorate that with, with stickers. And um, I made, made my first one rather pink. But this time I've, I've been doing doing blue, doing blue, blue, so some blue butterflies on. Um, I've got some butterfly stickers here. And you, you can put as many as, as you like on. So you can see, see the stickers on there. And then the, the next, um, you need to decorate the other side too. Now, if you haven't got um, stickers, you, you can, as I said earlier, you could do patterns or pictures or um, flowers as I, I did um, some flowers there. Then when they're nicely decorated, you need to stick the glue stick, the, 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 with the glue stick, you need to stick your concertina onto the two um, hearts. Now, it's quite tricky at this bit because you, you, I found it's quite difficult to line them up um, so that the card will actually not be skew if, you know, like one bit up like that. So what, what I discovered was the easiest thing to do was to um, get your concertina and make a little mark where you're going to glue it. So I, I made, actually made a little pencil mark there and there. And then with your other card, um, line it up so that the hearts are, are absolutely opposite and put it down. And then you can take the, the top one off and make the pencil mark um, to match. Then all you need to do is take your glue stick put a bit of glue on the two, two sides and make sure you get it the right way up. Now I hope I'm doing this in a hurry, so I, I hope I've got my other other end in the right place so that it lines up, but I might not have done, so we'll have to see. See if I can fold it all up again.
Not quite, actually. So you have to be very patient and just get it right, but more or less right. And then you can put decorations on that one and on the back if you want to. I put um, a little sticker of a, a cupcake on, sitting on a heart on, on the back of that one. Now, just another tip, when, when you're doing your writing, um, this write, writing in, inside wasn't quite in the middle. And I discovered that when I did this one, um, I didn't, li didn't leave enough room for the, for the um, concertina bit to stick on. So you need to move your writing a little bit to one side to allow for that. Then all it, you need to do is to pop, pop it in an envelope and keep it for Mothering Sunday to give to whoever's looking after you. I hope you enjoy making it and they enjoy receiving it. Thank you, Sheila. That Thank was you. really lovely. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody will enjoy making the card. Thank you. Oh. So next, you've got a special present that you can make for your mums or your carers, and Heather's going to show us something wonderful. Heather. Hello. Today we're going to make some what we call chocolate crispies. They're very easy. We've got 200 grams of melted chocolate in this bowl here. And there's about four large handfuls of cornflakes. You can use Rice Krispies or cornflakes, both as good as each other. Make sure it's well coated. Yes, I think they can all go in. Sometimes I am a bit more generous than others. The time they act, the chocolate actually solidifies again, it'll all be nice and solid in the paper cuts. There we go. All nicely melted. And now we've got some little paper cups you normally have for cakes. All we do is spoon it in, get rid of that bowl, spoon it into these paper cups there and press it down. Yeah, just two, two or three, and then we can see. Then we decorate them on top. And when they're cool and solid, they're rather lovely. Scrummy. Right. There we are. I've just done two, three to start off with. But you can see those all in their cases. Next thing, I've got a little bit of icing sugar, which is a good idea. Makes it just look like snow. There we are. This, and I've also got little heart shapes which can be put in there. These can be also used on ordinary cakes as well. There we are. I hope you have good fun doing those. There. 
take long at all. Thank you, Heather. They look wonderful. Not very good for you, I think, but they look absolutely smashing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure everybody's mum will love them. <laughs> One day. <laughs> <It's free. laughs> Hopefully my, my grandchildren might make me some. That would be nice. <laughs> Right, that's lovely. Well, thank you so much for being with us today for Messy Church. Uh, and do join in again next Wednesday and find out what's happening then. But now we'll finish with a prayer first and then we will try to do Messy uh, Grace together. So I'll finish with a prayer and then we'll do Messy Grace. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us so much. Thank you that our mums love us so much and other people care for us too and love us. Help us to know how much and help us to show our love this Sunday for those who care for us. For we ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Right, shall we attempt messy grace? Ready? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I think we're getting better at that. <laughs> so thank you for listening once again and we'll see you again in a month's time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Jesus' love is very wonderful. Oh, wonderful love. So high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it.